So we just covered this in the last video, but just to reiterate, when you change your workspace, what you're really looking at are the panels and the positioning and the placement of the panels. And so three of the most common workspaces that we'll use in our class are the typography, because I highly recommend that you use that, the essentials, because that's the default one. Um, although if I ever asked you a question, like to name a workspace, default is not a workspace, but essentials could be considered the default workspace. And then we will use the interactive for PDF workspace when we work on our very last project in Art 1200, which is an interactive PDF portfolio of the work that you've created throughout the semester. Um, I also covered this in the last video, but I want to make sure that I cover it in a formal lecture. When you have the panels hanging out on your workspace, the way that they are connected and grouped together um, can be considered that they are nested or they are docked. And when panels are nested, they're grouped together and you see tabs at the top you can only view one of the panels at a time and so in this example here I have the stroke the swatches and the gradients panel that are nested if I click on swatches I can open the swatches panel but it will hide the strokes panel and then if I click on gradient panel it will hide the other two and so there are pros and cons to that um, but that is what it is now you don't have to nest the panels you could dock them if you still want them to be linked together in some way but you want to be able to open them all at the same time you can dock them and to dock them basically means to anchor the top and the bottom of your uh, panels together so that if you move one they both move and you can see on your illustration of your panels if they're docked or they're nested and so pages layers and links are nested together in a group but then I see a solid bar and this basically starts a new grouping. And so strokes and color, they're grouped together, and then, or they're nested together, and then swatches is all by itself. And basically what that's saying is that if I wanted to, I could open the swatches panel, and I could open the color panel, and I could open the links panel, and they can all expand and be open at the same time vertically. But if I wanted to open the links and the layers panel at the same time, I will not be able to, because it will look similar to the strokes, swatches, and gradients panel that you see in the middle of the screen. When you are creating documents in InDesign, a lot of the times when you, not a lot of the times, but fairly often when you first start using InDesign or you create a document and you're in a rush, you create what you think is right and then you realize that your setting is wrong. And so we've already learned, I'm going to jump to InDesign for a second, that if we choose File, New, and Document, there are many settings that you can choose in the New Document dialog box. And I would argue that if this is not the right size, so the document I created for the example is 7 inches by 9 inches with uh, standard printing bleeds and I have 1 eighth of an inch bleed. If my document was supposed to be 8 by 10 or if it was supposed to have half inch margins, the correct thing would be not to close out of this document and create a new document altogether. Because that's time consuming, especially if I had actually designed something on there. So let's quickly recreate that. We'll recreate the bad document that's the wrong size. But instead, you can go back to File and Document Setup. Zoom in here, File and Document Setup. And almost all the settings that you saw in the File New Document dialog box, they'll be present in the Document Setup dialog box. I'm going to jump back to the slideshow. And so to access that, you can go to File and Document Setup, and you'll see that the majority of what you want to access from that new document dialog box is present. You can change the intent from print to web or digital publishing. You can increase the number of pages. You can change the facing pages to be facing pages or non-facing pages. You can change the size of your document. You can add bleed if you forgot. But there's a couple settings that are not present here. Maybe take a minute and see if you can recognize which settings are missing. So one of them in particular is if you look at your document, and I'm going to zoom in for a second here, I have my black page line, which represents my 7 by 9 inch document. I have a bleed on the outside of that, which is 1 eighth of an inch past the edge of my page. And in theory, I'm going to cut on the black line, and all the stuff in between is going to get deleted. But this purple line represents the margin. And so I set the margin at what I would say is the absolute least that you ever want to put a margin at, and that's 1 eighth of an inch. But if it's wrong, I cannot go to File, Document Setup, and adjust the margin. I can't do the column or the gutter either, and those are the other two things that are missing. However, between File and Document Setup and Layout, Margins and Columns, you can access everything that you would have set in the File New Document dialog box. 
And so if you go to layout and margins and columns, you'll see that now I could say, oh, I wanted to have half inch margins on all sides, and you can change that for your page. There's one key thing to remember. If you go to File and Document Setup and you make any changes in the Document Setup dialog box, you're making this change for your entire document. And so if you have a 400 page document and you're on page 3, it will affect every page in the document. However, if you go to Layout, Margins, and Columns and you have a 400 page document and you were just on page 3, you are only affecting page 3 of your document. And so you can come in here and add three columns to your, your page. And if we add new pages, the new pages go back to whatever the default was in your new document dialog box, minus any changes you may have made in file document setup. I'm going to undo that because we only want one page for now. And I actually do want to have small margins for your project, so I'm going to undo that as well. And so this is just an illustration that shows you, and if you read uh, carefully on the bottom of my last slide here, um, all new document dialog box decisions can be edited via the file new document, uh, file document setup dialog box or the margins and columns dialog box. The last thing I want to talk about in this video before we move on to the next video is how to add pages to your document. So we will do an entire lecture um, about three quarters of the way through the semester on making multiple page documents. Like the first six or seven projects that we do are all just one page um, so that we can feel more comfortable using InDesign and then we'll start kind of branching out into multi-page documents. Um, but if you wanted to add additional pages there are probably four or five different ways to do that. So this is just one if you want to add or delete pages. If you go to the layout menu and choose pages you can choose to add a page and if you choose to add a page it will just add one new page after the current page that you're on. So if you're on page one it will add page two immediately after that. If you're on page 9, it will add page 10 after that. If you choose to insert pages, you'll get a dialog box which allows you to make more decisions. You could still insert just one page if you want to. Uh, under here it says how many pages should be added. You could choose one. In this example, I'm adding three pages. You can say where should it go. In this case, it'll go after page 5. And so the new pages will be page 6, 7, and 8. If there were existing pages 6, 7, and 8, they will become pages 9, 10, and 11. And then down at the bottom it says which master page should be used. We're not going to talk about master pages for a few weeks, and so you can ignore that for now. Um, but you would want to make a decision on which master page it's linked to. All InDesign documents by default have a master page, uh, which I kind of came out wrong. They, there is a master page for every document. It happens to always be labeled a master, um, but I meant it as lowercase a master. And so right now you wouldn't have the option to choose anything but that capital A dash master master page. And so for now just go ahead and uh, leave that be.